Okay, so we are now on the second to the last project in chapter 19, 1928. Aid Belial Yalitz Mishpat Ufi Rashaim Yavala Aven. So uh, ideally, we'll finish this possible today, but it's a tough one uh, to read, and I don't, I did not uh, get a chance to prepare the idea. So just to like looking at the facts. So we'll see what happens because I want to do Q and A tomorrow. Okay. Ideally, okay. So Aid Belial. So we that was the, as far as we got yesterday, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a, so Blial is a uh, compound word of Bli and Ol. So uh, without a yoke, I think the best translation is lawless. Uh -huh. Okay. A, uh, not necessarily lawless in, well, I mean, I guess we have to understand what that is. So a lawless witness. And how do you translate Yalitz? This is, this is the tough one. Chase? No, no. Not nice. Okay, so one thing is advocates. Okay, let's say that. Advocates. Another possibility. Prosecutes. Interesting. I wonder if it could be used as a prosecution. I always forget. Is that related to Melita? That's the other, that's another one. I don't know what that means. Yeah. <laughs> so no one knows what Melita means. <laughs> so Melita, Melita is to, um, in Mip, if you look in the Sion, he says Melita. Oh, but, oh, no, no. <laughs> yeah, so it, poetic uh, expression. Okay. Okay. Um, oh. So I was thinking that mainly is like an advocate of right. Right. Like, 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 yeah, yeah, I thought that's what you were saying uh, for yeah, your, yeah, your, your yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, yeah. Like, like, yeah, 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 no, no. <laughs> Ooh. Um, so, um, Beautifies, like linguistically beautifies, I would say, is what if you're using it. <laughs> All right, so linguistically, <laughs> linguistically beautifies Mishpat. Okay. Uh, hello. Um, there's another one, another translation. I mean, that's what Melita. Melita is, is I, I don't want to say poetry because it's not always poetry. It could be like, like, Melita is also like a, a, a well formulated saying. Like adding your thing to the end. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Poetic, like, like the poetic of flowery. Flowery, yeah. I mean, like that, like, kind of type of connotation. Yeah, right. So that's, I'm saying, is meaning number two. Uh -huh. Yeah. And then the third one comes from a, I'll give you a hint, comes from a type of, of uh, evil character in Michelin. Lates. Lates. So the other one is mocks, okay? Mocks or derides. Uh, Mishpat, justice. Kind of makes more sense. Yeah, you would think that, right? Why would a lawless person? And I mean, I guess it depends on the type of lawlessness. So, advocates uh, seems to be the least likely, right? Unless supposed to be pretending to right? <laughs> Unless he what? Unless he's like acting like he like on the outside, he advocates. For sure. Right. So that if you're gonna go that route, I feel like linguistically beautifies would probably fit better. Like mm -hmm. he's like presenting a false uh, attitude or or stance on like a particular mishpat thing. Right. Yeah. And then upi rashaim yivala oven. And the mouth of wicked people swallows iniquity. Yeah, will swallow iniquity. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's a quite a vivid uh, muscle. All right. So sadia gaon. Malita. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, just to explain what I meant when I said no one knows what Malita means. Uh -huh. uh, you know, this is the thing in the beginning of Mishlei with. Um, uh, Mm -hmm. So it lists four types of content in Mishle, and you got to look at the Mufarshim to see how they break those four down. So like there's lots of different things about what Melita in Mishle means, and that's another layer of complication because, you know, you could have the word Melita, but maybe Shlomo uses it in a specific way, and the only way to tell that is from like his Hakdama where he classifies it in four ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How can you two week versions of yeah, that was the um. Uh, just to refresh my memory, that was the last diversion that we did before Corona, in our morning favora, right? We yeah. tried to just learn yeah. this like from the beginning, and uh, and we and then and then Corona hit. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It was, like yeah, it was a, and what we did was good, but yeah, yeah. I was there for your Yeah. And then like the people who like you guys all were like. Oh, we're giving up on the other. Yeah, like, we're all giving up on. on so <laughs> but um, I didn't want to. Yes. Oh, thank you for uh, for clarifying. All right. Um. So, Sadigon, let's just see what he says here. I, I don't know if we want to focus on him. 
Mi shem melitz b'mishpat harihu ke'ed lial. One who is melitz b'mishpat, but he's not really taking a stance on melitz here. Uh, he is like a, law, a lawless witness. So that is a non-literal interpretation, right? Because plain shot is the lawless witness is melitz mishpat. Right. He's saying that if you are melitz b'mishpat, so first of all, he's making that into the subject. And he's saying that the predicate of it is that it it's like he is a, uh, a, a lawless witness. And then the divrei harishaim, the words of the shaim yalimu es harishaus, rishaus or rishus, rishus probably. It uh, the words of the rishaim will conceal their evil. All right, so let me just type that out because I had to figure it out. So one, oops, one who hello, who, and well, I don't know what he means by melitz. Um, I'll catch you up in a second. Um, in judge, justice or judgment. Oh, that's another thing also. Is mishpat is either justice or judgment. Mm. You know, um, meaning the phenomenon of justice or like an instance of judgment um, is like a lawless witness. Uh, and the words of the wicked uh, will conceal their evil. Uh, okay, so that... This is a difficult puzzle to translate. Okay. So, what we have here is, uh, well, I think what I'm going to do, let me read the, the English translations and then we'll compare that to ours. The article says, the lawless witness will mock judgment. So, they're going with mock, like lates. Like um, and the mouth of the wicked will swallow, and then in brackets, his words of iniquity. Okay. Because you can't literally swallow iniquity. Well, you also can't literally swallow your words. But all right, living living knock says an ungodly witness, which I only know that ours are ungodly. I have never heard of an ungodly uh, witness, but uh, an ungodly witness speaks eloquently of justice. So that's like the Melita thing. Okay, oh, that's the living knock. Yeah, and the mouths of the wicked swallow iniquity. And then Alter says a worthless witness. I don't know where he gets that from. Scoffed justice. So he also goes with a mockery translation. And the mouth of the wicked swallows crime. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like a weird like circus trick, right? Yeah. <laughs> Watch this. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Okay. So, d d the, in terms of the ambiguity here, the tricky word is yalitz, which either means to advocate, to linguistically beautify, or to mock. That's like the main, uh, the main uh, ambiguity there. Yeah. Okay. So, what do we ask? Yalitz. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hold on just one second here. Uh, smaller. Yeah. Okay. So let's go here. So what is uh, an aid bleal? Is this specifically um, advice for something having to do with judgment? Yeah. So uh, by that, do you mean like is this court? In court or yeah. Is yeah. This like so, right. Is uh, what is the context? Uh, is it specifically, that's not how you spell specifically, specifically in court? Or is this, does this extend to any form of testimony? Did we have one before where like it said testimony and like we said it could either be in court or it could be anytime you like report observations? Yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Like that. Okay. Yeah. So that, that, that I, well, here also has Mishra. So. Right. Yeah. It, it definitely leans towards, uh, towards Mishra. But, it could be mishpat in terms of judgment, like when someone has to like make a, uh, judgment, a judgment call. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Another question. Yeah. Is yalas are yalas and yuvala considered? Are they like opposites or are they related in some way? That's a good question. Also, so what uh, I didn't write. The, what is yuvala? I'm oh, sorry. What is a yalit? Uh, yalit. And then, um, yeah. So our. So what what is yuvala oven? I guess we have to ask, right? Yeah. What is yuv? La, Yivala oven. You want? Uh, I think this is an, a linguistic uh, pun, though, hmm. right? Blial and Yivala. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like it's, it's like a word scramble. You know, yeah. it's like slumble pun. You know, like like it's it's not like an actual like ha 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 pun. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. What is the relationship? Would you say that it's poetic slash poetic? Mm, I would mock it. <laughs> okay. um, what is the relationship? I'm going to broaden it. What is the relationship between the two halves of the puzzle? Uh, and say, like, and then break that down into is, uh, like, you know, specifically between the 
Aid Blial and the Roshayim, uh, and between the uh, Yalit and the Yivla Aven. Yeah. Are these two opposites of each other, or are they like right? Opposites? Are they opposites? Are they on the same side? Which that's when we hit an opposite. They need yeah. to infer. Yeah. It says like P and Yavala here. Is it referring to like speech or the act, like maybe some actions? Like what is that referring to? Yeah. So I'm going to put that under the what is Yavala? Yavala. Is it Yavala or Yavala? Yavala. What is the Yavala oven? Is this speech? Is this entirely in speech, I guess? Entirely in speech? Uh, is it in action? And by that, do you mean that like. Like, is he using his words to conceal or, or do something? Is it like. Is he using his words to do something with, with the oven, or like is he doing something else? Uh, I don't think he's using words. Yeah. To, to do something, but I don't know. Well, I, I think that the that part's clear because it says pirushayim. But I thought what you were asking is he is he concealing like other things that he could be saying, or is he concealing actions? Yeah, that's that's that's. Yeah, but I think the thing that's doing the concealing is his, is his word because mm -hmm. that's the mouth. That makes sense. Yeah. And presumably also, I mean, like, I don't think it's too far of a stretch to say that these are both talking about some form of speech or testifying, like the aid and the pee shine, mm -hmm. you know? Right. Yeah. It's making it sound like they're kind of, um, I think it's kind of weird that it's doing this, but it sounds like it's praising both of them for only being bad in speech as opposed to in action. Okay, I can see how you can get that. Uh, I, I would, I wouldn't have gone in that direction. I would have said that the context of edus, you know, means that we're talking about how they're evil in testifying. Yeah, except that if you take Yalit as like raising, not like as like loud and refining. Oh right, like mishpat, and then so it's like basically it's saying like they're being an aid leal as opposed to like an aspirer leal, then you're basically like. I don't know. I, See, I, I, maybe I'm missing your 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 uh, intuitive current here, but like, it's like if we had a puzzle about the Rashaim or like a Russia, um, you know, a, a, a Russia flatters, uh, you know, the judge, mm -hmm. something like that, right? So I wouldn't say that it is like praising him by saying that the only bad thing he does is he flatters. I would say no, like the subject of the puzzle is the is verbal. Yeah, yeah, you know. Um, and I think the fact that it says Yali Mishpat, even if you learn it as like um, using flowery speech, I think the fact that it's a lawless witness means that this is a bad thing. Um, yeah. Okay. Unless, right, I guess I was thinking like advocating or or whatever. Or yeah. Or like Mishpat yeah. is like, that is actually like in line. With the yeah, I just think the only thing that's preventing me from saying that is that the Blial. Right. I think the fact that like, I did, that's that's what's uh, you know okay. like you know if, if he is advocating or poetifying, then uh, it's it's somehow duplicitous or bad, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think. Um, I have like a small observation. Sure. Um, we can transition, by the way, into um, explanation oh, and oh, answers yeah. now because I feel like I do want to finish this today. Okay, fine. So, yeah. So, then, yeah, but, yeah. Um, so if we say that it's flowery language, then. Um, I can see a way that the two halves of Pasuk are kind of opposites. Mm -hmm. The Igliol is like, um, is using like, like verbose flowery language. Yeah. Um, so he is meant to be very expressive in, in some way, whereas the Russia is swallowing, I was mean, going to say, mm -hmm. and then that's, um, so which, is, which is like the opposite. That's a good opposite. Yeah. yeah. Um, I just had a, a, just a, a thought. When you were saying before that, is it advocate and prosecute? Um, I now remember maybe a better word than advocate is, uh, which is not really used in English, so is a, an, a melee to an intercessor, right? Someone who, who gets involved to, to, on someone else's behalf. And I'm remembering this because by Yosef in Mitzrayim, the brothers didn't know Kiha Meili to Ben Otam, that there was a, there means translator, but like that there was a, a, uh, an intercessor between them, you know. So maybe advocates is a little bit too of a too much of a positive connotation. Um, so a law of intercedes in or with justice, 
meaning that that like captures the skeptiness of what he's doing i think you know like yeah. like he's like intervening in a in, in a inappropriate way somehow yeah okay. i guess this is contrast what i just said i have a way of reading that where they're two kind of saying the same thing yeah um so if you say the israel yalik and israel who like flower fries and I love how we don't have an actual good word. Yeah. yeah. By not saying it directly, he obscures what he is saying. And, you know, makes the truth that way. And it would be refined to all the other than by the Russian not speaking behind, you know. Yeah. Right. So that's like a, um, a, is that you're saying that's the contract with Isaac's thing? Oh, well, it's just, or the confidence. It's an opposite in mind of like they're both kind of something. Say what you said again, because somehow what you said in my mind is similar to what you said. But I mean, what I'm saying is um, the Aid Leal is uh, it being very verbose, whereas the, the Raka is the is not speaking. Right. Like, right. So so th that could also be though two forms of twisting the mishpat. No, no, yeah. Yeah. Right. It's just yeah. Yeah. So it, it's it, not not to slot it into these categories, but it's it like they fall along the equal line the the lines of like lying by commission and lying by omission, you know, like in the sense that not that he's like outright lying, but that he is he's um flowerizing the uh the um the uh the, the, the mishpat to distort it presumably in some way. And then the other the other guy is like concealing stuff. Uh, one thing I just also want to clarify here, let's do what we did last time we had testimony took him that even if this could be extended beyond the court case, it has to apply to the court case. So when we think about it, let's let's think about it in the court case or the court context, and then and then afterwards we can see if it applies to any form of testimony. That's one thing. The other thing I want to point out is, like, it's weird because ultimately, like, we I, what is the relationship between testimony and mishpat and judgment or justice? Because the the aid is not actually pronouncing the judgment. It's like he, his words are the basis upon which the judgment is pronounced. So like, I think we have to think about that in order to get the facts of the scenario. That's what I'm wondering. I mean, it, 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 I would like to say that. I have like bits of a theory it's not sure. um, you know, hard, but I was also thinking about like the court case scenarios and like what's uniquely interesting about a witness is that they can be culpable for a crime they didn't commit mm -hmm. if they testify falsely. Mm -hmm. Um, and presumably the Russia is guilty of crimes directly. Mm -hmm. So there's some interesting relationship mm -hmm. between a Russia who commits a crime. And maybe that's maybe that's the person that wins the testifying again. Uh -huh. And like he might be pursuing justice by testifying falsely against who he sees as guilty, but actually he ends up being culpable for that thing he's trying to stop. Okay. Like, so that actually helped me to understand or to, to solidify like uh the way I'm inclined to read this, but I'm not, I'm not like locked into it, is that I think if you just said Russia court case, then like we would think that that we're talking about a Russia who's like on trial for doing a crime. And the fact that the person who's on trial doesn't really have a speaking role in the in the you know a speaking role in like the court proceedings, you know. So that's I think that's why I'm assuming that the Russia is a witness who's testifying here. Not that that doesn't rule out anything that you're saying. I'm just like something about what you said, like talking about like the Russia like doing bad stuff or whatever. Made me realize why I'm assuming that the Russia is the is the. So, so I guess the the question now would be how do you differentiate him from the lawless witness because right. presumably a lawless witness is some form of Russia. Uh, right, right. Yeah. Well, yeah. Depends on the type of court case. If it like if it's. Um, That's true. I mean, if you're making. If, it, if it's a monetary court China's, case. Yeah. Yeah. Then, yeah. Then, um, then there's there's, there's the two litigants. If it's litigants, then um then the litigants have a speaking role and the. Agent Mark was to just give testimony and then, uh, and then not like not be involved. Right. I guess, yeah, I guess I was automatically thinking of like yeah. capital cases. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I just, it seems to me actually like, it made more sense to try to interpret this as, um, as uh, like a regular monetary case. Uh -huh. It's more common, and because then you can have parties other than the witnesses. Uh huh. Okay, that that confuses things in a, a, a meaning. The fact that this is not just one court scenario. I mean, I'm not saying it's bad that you said that, but um, before that, I didn't catch you up. If you want me to catch you up, it's up to you. Okay. Aid Blia Yalit's Mishpat. We have three translations of Yalit. A, so a, a lawless witness either intercedes, meaning like he takes some sort of like, you know, role where he's like a go between, 
uh, he linguistically beautifies, that's like Melita, or he yalit, he mocks justice, and the mouth of the wicked will swallow iniquity. Yeah. So in the, maybe uh, I'm realizing because you were talking about Okay. All right. <laughs> the aid in the aid in the Russia, perhaps they're working together. Like if the Russia is the person who's and the aid is testifying for him. So mm. you have a situation where an aid maybe is speaking about hiding what the meaning is, and the Russia is like it's not speaking because he's not the aid, but he's still he's the one who's really like holding the iniquity inside of him. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Right. Oh, so this I'm is sure what that would be teaching, but right. Yeah. I have like a general thought about what this could be teaching. Sure. Um, and I think maybe after that, should we start looking at Mafartin? Yeah. Just to get some direction. Yeah. Um, I think it's. I think it's saying that. I think the idea is that you can't deduce um, whether someone's being honest by the amount that they're that they're speaking. Mm. Because the aid is going is, is going on at length and like uh, uh, like about Israel, but he's an aid mm -hmm. and the, the the Russia is swallowing his iniquity um, and like not you know not expressing, but like both of them are being are, are like being false. That's a good direction. I, I feel like I missed the key point. What's what was, what was like the crux of that? That um like. As a person could think that, like, oh, this guy's go like, um, this guy's going on at length about about Mishra. He can, like, he must be being honest, and like that, like that's not a metric for for this for figuring out. And you can't you can't go the opposite way either. That a person who's being very like terse is is you know is you know gotcha right. Um, mm -hmm. That's I, I like that I, that that approach. Uh, one other little thought. Yeah. Like, not the same, but it might be a little similar. Is that um, the the lawless witness? Meaning, I feel like you can ascribe potentially good intentions to either of these cases, and um, he's basically saying, like, you know, watch out for that trap. Um, um, but basically, a, a lawless witness who's like, I guess the way he has this ambiguous word sets it up that like he could be thinking he's pursuing justice. Um, by like making his own judgment call, meaning the role mm -hmm. of the witness is not to make mm -hmm. a judgment mm -hmm. call, but in this case he might be. Uh -huh. um, in which case he could be thinking he's pursuing justice to like uh -huh. right. testimony. Right. Um, That's definitely a trap. Yeah. 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 And then like the, the the evil person is swallowing iniquity. Um, it's sort of like you know. It, it might even if if we put him in as a witness, it even works better. Meaning like it's the witness who like doesn't want to harm someone almost mm -hmm. you know, like oh like i don't want to cause this person harm but like you're the witness your job is right to like you know you're not you're not by testifying truthfully against someone who's like gonna be punished yeah you're not hurting them you're like up, uh, holding up justice uh, yeah so this fits into sadigon right sadigon is the one who said one who is mainly the mishpat he's like a lawless witness yeah. meaning meaning sadigon switched it and says we're not actually talking about a lawless witness but if you're like your case is that if you, if if you are in a witness role and you try to intervene in the justice system to bring about like good you know the correct results, but you you are intervening you're you're like uh, you know messing with the justice system, then you're you're like a, a false witness. You know you're like a lawless witness, and that's that's, that's bad. And then what did he say for the second one? V'divra harasham ya'alimu et harishuts. The words of the wicked will conceal their wickedness. That's a little different, but yeah, but uh, I uh, let me just think about what you're saying here. So we, we have two approaches now, so we shouldn't go to the Mavarkin play. I want to work out these two approaches. Were you going to say something on one of them? Well, yeah, I'm just going to clarify that, that point that he, like, is it a case where, like, let's say, like, he knows that this guy's guilty, so he, like, makes his crime sound even worse, so that, like, yeah, that would be, uh -huh. make it you know, like, sure, a sure thing that he's going to be, like, uh, you know, you're talking for the first half? The first half. Yeah. So he, he thinks he's doing the right thing by like making this a done deal. Right. He's really being a false way. Right. Yeah. That's a good example of that. Yeah. But and then the other side is that that like there's the opposite thing of like 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 you're saying that like you're sort of like um like you're scared that you're gonna like you you actually don't have a good example of that. 
Yeah, so I, I have an example, and this is not exactly in court cases, but uh, thinking about when huh, one of the nice things about this year is uh, not having to write bajillion letters of recommendation, you know, for like seminaries and colleges and stuff. And like colleges is a different thing, but with seminaries, then like um, sometimes people are surprised when I say that like I write an honest um, like like let's say like a certain student has certain weaknesses or like personality traits that are bad or like like you know certain um you know issues like problems and stuff and people will say that like oh that's bad like how can you write bad stuff you know and and like my, my approach is is i mean again this is for because you know uh of the nature of what seminary is supposed to be that like it's in everyone's best interest if everyone knows this full student profile because otherwise like like, you know, we want them to be well matched for, for their seminary and we want the seminary to be well matched for them. Mm -hmm. And if like you're concealing stuff with this good intent of, I just want them to get into seminary, like, yeah, but that doesn't do so well if like they, if, if, if they're not a good match for it, you know, like they have some sort of like huge thing they're struggling with that is gonna like make it so they don't get anything out of it or create problems, then that's bad, you know? But I feel like that's the kind of like, um, yeah. like thought that like, you know, like uh, of the swallowing iniquity of like, I don't want to reveal anything bad because I'll get them in trouble. Well. Yeah, yeah. That, that was that last part of exactly how you phrased it was yeah. what I was thinking about. Like, I feel like especially in like our like social society mindset, it's like the idea of telling on someone is, has such a tremendous amount of negativity. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, who stole this? Oh, I don't want to say, I don't want to get right, right. Yeah. You're not the one getting in trouble. They're the one getting them in trouble. Right. They're the one who's exactly. Yeah. Justice. And another example of that also is like if, if if someone is like like starts dating someone else and you know that like there's like red flags that they're not right. seeing and you, right. and they're like, but I don't want to like rock the boat. Well, you should rock the boat, yeah. like, you know, right. but it's, it's, so it's coming from like a good place right. to conceal the iniquity right. that you know about right. this person. Right. But you, you, you are being a Russia right. by doing that. And that's exactly why I feel like he formulates it this way. So he's saying like, here's a good path to be a lawless witness or Russia. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. And, and yeah. I, I, again, I think that the, the rhetorically speaking, like, it is the right way to deliver this message because you are painting yourself as the good guy right. and saying, oh yeah, you are being the bad guy in this yeah. scenario, even though your intentions are good, but you're being the bad guy, you right. know? And like, that'll give you pause. Yeah. yeah. So the, the way that um, reading this is um, a person who's Yalas Mishpat is the Ain't Leal and a person who's Yavala Oven is, is- Has a wicked mouth. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that's the way we're reading it. And, uh, and this now is clear that it, um, just from our examples, this clearly extends beyond the court cases, mm -hmm. right? This is just, if you if you see something, say something, type, you know, uh, that type of witness, you know, um, where you you have knowledge of, um, uh, you have knowledge that could actually be instrumental in, in you know, arriving at a right decision. And like, this, this mishpat here does not mean like pronouncing a judgment. It means like, People making the right judgment in terms of judging a, a case. What, what do you say? Like upholding justice. Yeah, but I don't even want to limit it to justice. I think like making a judgment call, like like we said earlier, you know, if someone is making a judgment call and they don't have all the facts, and uh, and you either think you're helping by exaggerating certain facts and like making uh, a big deal about it, or by withholding certain facts. Yeah. It's kind of funny because he's exaggerating the situation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. That's funny. Yeah. Right. And I guess I feel like it's also good to like. As we're like busting this out to point out uh, the limitations of this. Yeah. I Meaning, like, there are times when one shouldn't share something. Right. You know, and yeah. Like, uh, uh, yes. And, Wait. Monday uh, next year, where you only share, well, my, my approach to the process yeah. is only share relevant information, what's necessary. Right. Monday is so long ago. <laughs> I don't remember anymore. Well, uh, silver tongue, no. There's one. That was here. No, so no, it was here. That was my thing with my mind. Oh no! Oh no! Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, so say, say again. It was, it was, you know, the process about where you say many words. Yeah. You know, I was translating that as I was interpreting that as like many words just means unnecessary. Uh huh. Right. Whereas to say that the exact tone is just like there are times where you just say listen. Yeah. Okay, so this is a this is a full idea. Yeah. All right. So now let's go back yeah. to your idea. I, I want to say about the, this process. Yeah. Before the idea, um, I think Paul Shlomo is um, following his own advice with this process because he's not putting like a rosy light on it because that because that would like because 
this is like a bad, a, a bad, like a bad thing to do. Yeah. I'm not gonna present it in a way that where it's like, oh, you know, it's like, good, but you know, like, yeah, <laughs> you know, you're an able y'all. Or yeah. Honest, I mean, you know. look, he warned us. He says he's gonna include in his book Melitzos, and this would be a Melitza. This would be like a a, a flowery, uh, you know, language. I mean, again, and we have seen this also, with like the guy who the lazy person has his hand in the dick and he can't even bring it back to his mouth. Like that's all like exaggerating. Right. You know, this is the technique that he uses. Yeah, I think exaggerating like in terms of increasing value is different than exaggerating in terms of facts. Correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. This is exaggerating to, to, to illustrate the point as well. Yeah. To, to be honest, in a way that's clear that's an exaggeration. Yeah. Well, to be honest, I, I feel like he's, he's, give, he's just giving an extreme case. I don't know if it's in of itself inherently exaggerating, meaning like this is true mm -hmm. and if, if if you're doing it to a certain extent, mm -hmm. if you're doing it on a smaller extent, then you're just doing this, you're doing this less. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think that is an important distinction about the uh, exaggerated case versus like extreme. extreme example. Yeah, yeah. Or sorry, the exaggerated um, language. Yeah, versus mm -hmm. extreme example, yeah. Um, just like an extreme example also, like we've seen this a lot with Michelin in terms of the way you use the word death. Like it'll say, you know, one who hates rebuke will uh, loves death, you know? Um, and uh, it's not like all rebuke that you neglect will lead you to actually literally die. But that mida of not of hating rebuke will lead to many bad consequences, the most extreme of which could be death, you know? And so like he is giving the extreme case because that's what affects the emotions. All right, now say yours again because I lost sight of it. Yeah. Um. Oh, no, yeah, let me, let, me actually, let me try saying it. I, I got sight of it, and you tell me if I'm missing something. Uh, is that um, each half of the puzzle is talking about, um, uh, the first half is talking about someone who is being very, very elaborate in their, their testimony, and the second half is talking about someone who's being very terse in their, their, their testimony. And you should not think that either of those are a valid metric for truth. Yeah. Um, and it is interesting how seductive it can be to like, oh, this person is going on in such elaborate detail. Like, how could they possibly come up with so much detail if, like, it weren't true, you know? But people can make up details, you know? And then the other thing is, like, oh, this guy only said, like, this one fact. So clearly, like, like he must be telling the truth because if he were lying, he would, like, go into more detail, you know? Uh, and, and, uh, and neither of those is an indication of, um, of, of truth. So now the question is, is um, I feel like in this case, the, with Zach's interpretation, I can see very clearly the practical implementation of this, but like, what are you supposed to do? Like, is this just telling you be on guard again uh, uh, in, in judging testimony in terms of like a number of words? Like, I feel like it's a more general in terms of the application. Yeah, I, um, I mean, as of now, I think the application is that when, you, when you're trying to evaluate the truth of some statement, mm -hmm. and like, like um, testimony, um, the paradigm of that is like testimony, but whenever you're trying to um, evaluate what someone says without having like any way of like like any like objective way that you can yeah you know. so maybe maybe then is, is just pointing out and maybe this is what you were saying all along it's not telling you how to evaluate testimony it's just pointing out two cognitive biases or one mm -hmm. cognitive bias that that you have to like identify and and strip away like it almost reminds me of the um let me see if i can find it here uh in the apology from plato I was that. yeah <laughs> um his opening paragraph right. he says um i do not know what effect my accusers have had upon you gentlemen but for my own part i was almost carried away by them their arguments were so convincing uh <laughs> on the other hand scarcely a word of what they said was true um as i was especially astonished at one of their many misrepresentations i mean when they told you that you must be careful not to let me deceive you the implication being that i am a skillful speaker i thought that it was peculiarly brazen of them to tell you this without a blush since they must know that they will soon be effectively confuted when it becomes obvious that i have not the slightest skill as a speaker unless of course by skillful speaker they mean one who speaks the truth if that is what they meant i would argue that i am an orator but not after their pattern you know and then he like criticized them for their flowery language but yeah 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 uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, Socrates. Um, he is. Yeah. He is. He, he is a good orator. Yeah. Not just because of the truth. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Okay. So he's, he's doing it at like showing the way he's talking about the truth. But like, he's not like, you know, he can't like reduce the fact that he's like saying spoken that that what he's saying is true. Yeah. Um, like, and more that you can deduce from. Yeah, that's a good way to say it. That because they're, because they're flowery, that 
the, um, what they're saying is true. Yeah. Right, you have to analyze like the argument they're actually saying. Yeah. Not how they're saying. It. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And like, that's a good, see, yeah. this is a good example of how that's the general point, but that's not going to help you to implement it initially. Actually, bring it down to the particular, and the particular is number of words or flowery speech. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's, uh, again, I haven't looked at them apart from yet. Let's just check out a couple in the remaining time. Let's start with Mitsuda Dabi because he's usually the most uh, um, plain spoken. Mitsuda Dabi, Yali Mishpat. So Yali, he's the one who says it's flowery, right? Uh, Yali Mishpat at the bottom right. Uh, Yali Mishpat is Yali Bit Mishpat. Okay. Yitakin Amara B'Metav Hamalita. He embellishes his words or he fixes his words with, uh, with beauty of speech. Laman yukublu ahalev, so that they will be uh, accepted upon the heart. The amino right. people will believe him. Okay, in Yivala Aven is divrei ha'aven yomar biblia. Words of iniquity he will say with swallowing. Lebal yargishu she'etem hakavana al davar ha'aven hahu, so that people do not sense that his essential intention is on the matter of iniquity. Yachu shalafi tumo yidavra. They'll think he's just speaking innocently. Okay, so, anybody get it? So, so just to get the facts here, fact for the first half is that the guy is beautifying his speech to make it more believable. Second half is the guy is tricking people into thinking that this is a phrase, Messiah Lifitumo, right? Messiah Lifitumo is when you like you, you really have a malicious intent for revealing something, but you pretend that you just like you didn't know that it was like malicious, you know, or like, like, oh, you, you, you were just like giving, giving the fact, like, I didn't know that it was, you know, you, you, you conceal your intent about why you're saying it. You know, this is, it's a form of, um, there's Lashon Hara, and this is one of the four forms of Abaf Lashon Hara, of the dust of Lashon Hara. Like, the example is like, um, like, let's say, like, uh, let's say, like, I know that you know a certain person. But I speak anonymously, and then when you're like, "Oh, are you talking about so and so," I'm like, "Oh, I didn't know that you knew them." You know, like, yeah. of course I did. You know, I'm, I'm just, you know. Yeah. So he's talking about like the level of deviousness that one needs to be very wary of. Yeah, um, yeah. And like in the swallowing iniquity, like I like how he said it. Like it just struck me. Like I could totally imagine someone like who is not, you know, doesn't have good intentions, saying something like, "I about to like." tell you something really bad, let's say about a person or whatever it is, like, oh, you know, I don't, I really don't want to like say something bad about them. Yeah. <laughs> just so that like, you now know to say something about them. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, as if it's their good intention. Right. Really, it's just, like, exactly. Which is like a whole nother level of deviousness. Yeah. Like, yeah. So he is also not talking about a court scenario. He's talking about speech in general. A few things in the second half have to be, if you feel like about function problems, because it has to be about not another person. Like, he's using, he's using first words to hide the fact that he's, you know, trying to get someone to do something. So I'm learning when he says, uh, um, he says, Divre Ha'avin Biblia, he says, matters of iniquity or words of iniquity with swallowing. And then he says, So the people don't sense that his essential intent is for that matter of iniquity. So it sounds like he has a matter of iniquity that he wants to relate to someone, but he does it in a way that makes it him seem like he's just speaking innocently. Right, but the matter doesn't have to be about another person. I mean that. I think so. Well, what's the other option? Meaning themselves. Maybe he's trying to get some gain from the speech, like some iniquitous. Yes, yeah, so I don't. I don't think that's. Yeah. You could you could read the puzzle that way. I don't think you could read the messages that way because it sounds like he's concealing the matter of iniquity by by being innocent about it, the way he speaks about it. So it's like he know he has dirt on someone, but he's like, whoopsies, like you know, <laughs> yeah. Also, just a point, like a small point as far as like application. I sort of feel like this could be very useful in terms as far as like relating it to a court case, like to talk to tell the judges, like. Mm -hmm. The judges are going to be listening to testimony, and you know the, the witnesses aren't just going to be like robotic and like giving perfect testimony. They're going to like like fluff it up on either end, and, yeah. You know, try to make themselves look good in some way or another. Yeah. And so, like these are things you need to be very careful about. You're going to have someone who's like, oh, I don't want to speak bad, and like they're just like setting up like this false, you know, yeah. structure. And then it applies to everybody because we're all judges in some case. Yeah. You know, so it's like. Yeah, I'm, I'm smiling because I'm thinking this probably happens in all court cases. But again, my, my main uh, pool of uh, experience is in high school. And like, let's say like something bad happens and like 
there's a student who witnessed it and like like the the administration like has to inter you like to ask them there's almost like a celebrity says like well and like yeah. like i have all written like well i saw it started one day when you know <laughs> it's just this, like very like elaborate thing you know uh yeah yeah um and it's funny because they will also they'll also do the second half like like they'll uh they'll like let some information drop like in a very like devious way so as to not so it's to bypass the guilt at being the one who got someone else in trouble, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what's the idea here? What's the idea in the puzzle? And I feel like I'd, I, I'd like some greater sense of the com the, the relationship between the two halves. Yeah, it seems weird. I, but I think the first one was that poor kid, like poor piece of thing would be not be. Well, I, I still so, think that you, when you said the Mishpat, I know he says the Mishpat, but, uh, I do think the fact that he doesn't mention anything else about court, I, I think he could mean just in judgment, like in, in judging something, you know? Yeah, and I feel like that's the unifying factor here is he, he switches it from like the speaking part to the judgment aspect. Like now we're taking the role of the judger. Yeah. And like that's the focus of this. Is like yeah. when you're judging speech, here are like some massive, like devious pitfalls. Yeah. Like, yeah <laughs> really be careful. Right. See, it's interesting also because like in the first half, he, the guy is actually distorting the facts themselves. And in the second half, it's not that they're distorting the facts, it's distorting their, their active speech, the nature of their active speaking. And like, I wonder even, sorry, I wonder if it's like distorting their intention. Yeah, their intention, like, right. They're making it seem like they're just like, don't want to get people in trouble or like, they don't want to say anything incorrect. Like I need to be careful. Yeah. But really, they're just using that front to like pick and choose what they Yeah. Should. Like that incongruity is what's making me not grasp the the Indian of the puzzle, you know, the the the, the subject. So maybe I, I feel like I get the second half better than the first from his perspective. So yeah. like in the first one, how is he adjusting um like how how is he covering the truth with his flower of speech and from his I mean it sounds like he just like he he knows that the person oh maybe this is a way. Right, so he says, "Laman yukubla ahalev yaminulos." So the people who believe him and, uh, will uh, accept his words and believe him. So both people are trying. They, they sense that there's going to be a certain attitude that the listeners would have that would cause them to reject his speech. Right. So in the first case, maybe they're going to be in doubt about it. So he has to make recourse to these like flowery ways of speaking or these you know rhetorical strategies to get them to accept it. And in the second part, if they thought he was just maliciously bad mouthing someone, then they wouldn't accept it. But if he just like mentions it in passing and they think that he's being he has no malicious intent then they'll accept it right i mean I, the the swallowing was the one that like got like visually got it to me the most of like you know like they saw like that, that, i like the way you phrased it of like they saw an obstacle and like preemptively yeah you know structured their speech around it but like the swallowing is like like they have like let's say they ask me a question like oh like what did this person do and i'm like oh the I don't want to say. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, okay, fine. I'll say. Yeah, it, yeah. Know? So it's like that, like small. Yeah. Yeah. You know? um, but yeah, I mean, I, I I like the way you phrase their intent of like preemptively, and like it raises like it basically says like this is a high like this is a very high level pitfall. Yeah. You know, it's like you need highly intelligent people to like preemptively see the see the barrier and like right. come up with a counter strategy, and they're saying like you as a judge need to be like. Be careful of that. Yeah, and I think that one of, one of the reasons why we don't see the pitfall is none of us want to view ourselves as manipulable, right. you know? So like, you're not gonna look, you're gonna look, of course I'm an objective judge, and so I can just evaluate the content on its own, or maybe I can like look at their the, at their intent, but you're not gonna say like, oh, they're trying to one-up me, right. and I I need to like factor that into how I evaluate their words, you know? Wow, well, you know, we see that all. Honestly, like, confessions, that's, that's something we actually do have to take into consideration in terms of like strategizing a, yeah. a negotiation. I mean, rhetoric is everything. I mean, all communication is built on rhetoric, but like, you know, this is a. Uh... Why are you trying to convince? Are there times? <laughs> are there times? You me out. <laughs> is there a time where you can do that in an ethical way? Where you, did you say can or can't? Can, can. You can. Well, I don't use the term manipulative. You love that term. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. I mean, that, that's, um, you know, these are powers that can be used for good or for bad. Like we just mentioned Socrates, right? 
is a master orator, but he's not like a, the sophists who he was against were like using this to like make bad appear good and good appear bad and, and like, you know, but Socrates is using it in the interest of like help, get, helping people become thinkers. Um, yeah, so maybe, maybe the finish is that you, like this case of an a or a Smitra, like that's obviously, everyone knows that's like a bad, you know, that's a check area. Yeah. And, like, you know, misleading everyone that's an mm -hmm. Um But this is, because this is a more subtle one, the second thing of like, sort of, either because, yeah, like just not, not saying, not saying things that could be helpful for case or whatever, and you're just, don't want to get him in trouble or whatever, something like that. So that's like a more subtle thing that you wouldn't think is like really is, is I guess bad or as much of a corruption of justice as the first one. Mm -hmm. But it's basically bringing both of these together in the same person because and saying like this second thing of swallowing, you know, swallowing the, the crime is the same as right. you know being. So you're saying the finish is really in the second one because yeah. we all recognize our lawless witness is bad, mm -hmm. but equally bad as the person who is masking their intention in, you know, in, in concealing uh, or in, in, in saying the bad th stuff this way. Yeah. And I wonder if a way to unify it, like I'm just like, thinking along that yeah. line, is that like from the way um, he's, he's like thinking about just saying beware of, of like people who are providing you information when you're making judgment, beware of their good intentions. Mm -hmm. I mean, like you might have people giving you information and you like see that their intentions are good. The very fact that your judgment is dependent on what they have to tell you means that you have to be like extra scrutinous on like what's going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, because good intention normally means like, oh, I can take what they're telling yeah. me. And it's like, no, that's not what like yeah. cases where good intentions is really a front right. for like giving you feeding you false information. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, we got good ideas here. <laughs> Stop here for today. All righty. <laughs>